got a really serious question here today that I'm going to try to answer. And it's a really hard question. And I think it's a very valid question. It's about self-study and how you can actually keep track of everything you learn and how to be focused, how to like know what to study and how to pick the topics. How do you do all of that? In this video, I want to talk about all of that. And we're going to start by answering a question that I received here from a viewer. So the subject is self-study, how you keep track of what you learn. Can you focus on multiple fields of study at once and other questions? The message reads as follows. I have a strange, long question, not relating particularly to math, but to studying in general. How do you document, keep track of what you learn on your own outside of an educational institution? Whether you're a student who's interested in a topic not yet explored at school or someone who's finished college and likes to study more on their own, at some point you'll try to take notes or find a way to store some of the information you learned. In your case, how do you keep track of what you learned? Do you just commit it to memory or do you write down what you deem important enough? And how would you structure your notes? If some notes can be categorized in more than one subject or field of study. Example, in theory, would you put notes on cryptography in a general category named cryptography or would you put it in other computer science notes or with math notes or with IT security, etc.? When I'm self-studying, I don't have the mindset that I'm a, in a specific major in college be it CS, math, or anything else. I just have general names for topics I'm interested in and find it sometimes hard to draw the line between, between fields of study. I also am not sure if I need to take notes at all. The one major thing I learned on my own, apart from some topics from subjects I already had in school, is programming. And for that, I didn't need to take notes. But from time to time, I write down some topics I'm planning to explore. The thing is, now I'm interested in more stuff like discrete math, computer science theory, and more. And I just find it hard to structure and balance my learning, which leads me to achieving very little progress. So how would you self-study multiple fields of science while also understanding, taking advantage of what you learn and not listen to the lecture course, do some problems, then forget it because your attention is divided. What do you do? I'm not saying I forget everything, but I don't remember everything important either. Sorry for the long question, and I wish you a nice day. So the person's name is Youssef. This is a great message because I kind of feel like this is a common thing. It's very easy when you're trying to self-study. I mean, look at all these books behind me. Where do you start? Like, how do you even remember what you learn? You know, what's the best way to do it? So... He wants to know how you can keep track of what you learn on your own. So you could do notes, right? You could create notes and just put them in folders. Um, you could categorize it by book. So like, here's a book here. I just happen to have this one here. It's just a book I was looking at. It's How to Read and Do Proofs uh, by Daniel Solo. And this is a great book for anyone who wants to learn to write proofs. So if you're doing self-study, maybe you can have a folder for the book. And that way your notes correspond to the text. Like you have some solutions worked out to this book. You have some notes which you took from the book. Because I think that because you don't have a lecture experience, right? you're doing this outside of an educational institution, you could take notes from the book and then just have them correspond to the book. And you can keep them together with the book. That's one way to do it. And I think it's a good way to do it. You had some other questions. Um, how do you keep track of what you learned? Do you commit it to memory or do you write down what you deem important enough? Yeah, you write down what you what you deem important enough and you, and you categorize it with the textbook you're reading. And I think that's a really good way to do it because what's going to happen is if you have... If you have a lot of different books like this, and like let's say I pick up a book uh, on abstract algebra, uh, I'll use uh, Serge Lang's Algebraic Structures, which I believe has been reprinted and has a new name now. In any case, it's a great book on abstract algebra written by Serge Lang. And it takes a very brief approach, and it defines everything very briefly and very condensed. So if you're sitting with that book and you're working out some proofs and writing down some definitions, um, you're going to have your notes for that book. Then you pick up a different book 
um, like the Galleon book, Contemporary Abstract Algebra by Joseph Galleon, which is also a great book on abstract algebra. And then you make your notes for that book. And so you'll find that there's a lot of overlap. So should you put it in a folder called abstract algebra or should you put it with the book? It's up to you. And at the end of the day, I, I don't think it matters that much, but it's good to keep notes. It's good to keep notes. And you learn what you learn, right? So um, yeah, you learn what you learn. You'll know what you know because when you sit down to read the book, you'll say, oh yeah, I know exactly what that definition is and you'll know it by heart. That's how you know that you really know the math. When you know those key theorems and those key definitions by heart and you can look at the book and say, oh yeah, I know how to prove that and you go through the proof. And you get that experience from working through multiple books, from working through multiple math problems and just practice and time. Uh, you had some other comments. Uh, how do you, you know, categorize, yeah, more than one field of study? So again, I would say uh, do it by book if you're concerned by that. Yeah, do it by book. And as far as studying multiple subjects, because that's something else that you were addressing in your, in your question, um, one thing you can do for that is you can have time study sessions. So like you can say, okay, uh, for an hour I'm going to work on this, and for an hour I'm going to work on this. It's very, very hard though, Okay, and I want to emphasize this. It's very, very hard to study like four subjects on your own and be consistent and be structured. It's very hard to do that. That's why people go to school, right? That's why they take classes. I'm not saying that you need to do that and you need to go to school. I'm just saying when you don't have the structure of a classroom, it's it's a lot harder, right? It's a lot. It's a it's much more challenging. That's why people buy courses and stuff. Like I have Udemy courses on Udemy. People buy those because, you know, even though um, they can get this stuff for free if they go on the internet and they can they can find other videos on the internet that have these things. It's 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 the structure of the course. It's the ordering. It's the assignments. That's what people get when they buy a course, right? And that's what you get when you take a course in college. And that's what you don't get through self-study. That's why I think maybe organizing your notes by book is a good way to do it. And if you're if you're gonna try to study like four different subjects at once, you can try it. Um, the biggest problem you're going to have is motivation. My advice is when you're doing self-study, just pick a book and learn. Um, try to try to make it random. You know, just say, "Hey, I'm going to get a book and I'm going to study today." For example, let me just show you. Let's say, let's say I wanted to do some math right now after making this video. Here's what I would do. Let me just show you right now. You see what I just did? I just picked up a book at random. I didn't even know what I was grabbing, and I grabbed one. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Elementary mathematical analysis. That's a lot of times what I do. I'll just grab a book because I'm a human being, and I also suffer from decision paralysis, right? Um, when you have so much knowledge behind you in your home, when you have so many books, when you have so many resources on the internet, knowing where to start is super tough. And sometimes I think the best way to start is just to pick up a book and start, right? And this is actually an excellent book. I have looked at this book. I've done a few of the problems and I've read small portions. It's a great book on elementary mathematical analysis. So that's the best way to learn. And then you're going to find that you enjoy your self-study sessions more when you randomly pick up stuff and randomly start doing math. And so I think if you organize your notes by book, I think that makes it more fun because that way you don't have to think, oh, this is going to go in the analysis folder. I mean, you can throw it in the analysis folder, but yeah, I don't know. It's just one thought. Does anyone else have tips or suggestions for how to organize their self-study? Hopefully my response has given maybe even just one uh, piece of useful advice. Hopefully it's been helpful. If you have any advice, leave a comment in the comment section below. Good luck.